Hello from Sydney, Australia's oldest city and probably the most famous. When you talk about Australia, many people immediately think about Sydney. And why is that? Come on, look around. This is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. I don't think I've ever seen so many sailboats. There's a lot to do in Sydney, so we're sharing our experience in four videos, each one representing one day of the trip. The great thing is that you can walk or get a ferry to almost everywhere, especially if you stay in the central business district. Today, we're gonna walk to some of the top places in town, those that you have to visit when you come to Sydney. And we start with the main landmark in the city and probably the country, the Opera House. Cheers! Is it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> but before we get started, someone needs a hat. See, it fits most. Wouldn't fit you. Smooth the base area. Cool. It is so hot and sunny outside. And guess who forgot his hat? I didn't forget. <laughs> you just didn't think you'd need, huh? It's nice. It's very nice. Feel good now? Yes, let's go. Ready? Vamos. Hola. Bueno dia. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's a wall? No, here. Ah. <laughs> Wow, it is so beautiful. It's so much bigger than you expect when you get up close. What does this design remind you of? It reminds me of a helmet of warriors from the French kingdom. Are we looking at the same building? Yeah, you know those hats? <laughs> I show you what I mean. This is supposed to remind you of a sailboat. Remember, we're in the Harbor City. Yeah, there's sails. There are two ways you can see inside the Opera House. You either go for a concert, some kind of event, or you join a tour. You cannot just walk and freely see it. No free options. I really wanted to go for a tour, but video is not allowed. So let's do the next best thing, which is see around. When you look from a distance, they all appear to be one single building, but no, look at this. They're all independent. Aren't they connected underneath? Uh, uh, um, my uh, view. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Here on the surface? No. Only when you get this close that you can see there's a design here, actually. There's a pattern along the entire roof. Now, that's another iconic location here in Sydney. That's the Harbour Bridge. Rumor has it that the actor that performed Crocodile Dundee worked as a painter on that bridge before his success in the movies. Oh, look at this. There's a nice restaurant inside one of the buildings. A nice bar, too. It seems to be closed at the moment. <laughs> you found her to eat, huh? Down here, this is actually the entrance to the Opera House. There seems to be various restaurants. Each section here has a different type of food. It's huge. Cheers! <laughs> Guess how much the beer 16. costs? 16. 15.50. It's a really expensive beer. Now tell me, is it worth it? Absolutely. Beer is expensive in Sydney, in Australia in general. And there's a reason. Taxes on alcohol are extremely high. Surprise, surprise. Oh! <laughs> Such a kid. Pork gambles. Good? Yeah. Nothing like sashimi on a hard day. I love this so much. Mm. It's one of my favorite dishes. There are so many cafes and restaurants here. So many places to eat. Life in Sydney revolves around the harbor. This is how important the harbor is here. And you can walk all around it. So from the Opera House, today we're walking this way. And in a future video, I'll show you the other way. Let me introduce you to the government house. This is the official residence of the state governor of New South Wales. Sydney is the capital of New South Wales. Oh, look at this. You can visit the house for free. They have guided tours, but our day is full today.
You think it's a cemetery? No, it's from old buildings they tore down. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Very unique. The government house is located today inside one of the most beautiful gardens in Sydney. It's a botanic garden and it is totally free to visit. Wow, look at the views all over from here. It is so beautiful. We started walking back there. The Sydney Opera House is hidden over here. And you come to the Botanic Garden, what people here will suggest is that you walk all this, all over the bay, all the way to that other side. Supposedly where you have the best view. One of those lucid dreams. Wow, and people are right. Look at this view. The trails go around and inside the entire park. And there's so much to see from a pond to monuments, a former fortress, even the secondary official residence of the Prime Minister of Australia. Where's the first? Canberra. Yes, that's the capital. You're so smart. You keep saying that. You don't believe it, do you? <laughs> This place here is known as Mrs. Macquarie's Chair. She was the wife of a governor at the time, the governor who founded the garden, and she used to sit here watching the ships sail into the harbor. Along the walk, you see the Opera House and the Harbor Bridge from so many angles. How nice! There's a wedding going on there! This is Australia's oldest botanic garden from 1816. Here they have a collection of plants from around the world, but mainly Australia and South Pacific. Someone from Australia is Australian, and someone from Sydney? Sydney. <laughs> no, next. Sid. Sid? <laughs> no, you'd never guess. I didn't either. Sydney Cider. That's, okay. that's a creative one, huh? Yeah, I guess. Wow, I didn't expect the Botanic Garden to be so huge. And it is very picturesque. Say that word. Wolomolu. Very good. How many O's? Without counting, without counting. Let me guess. <laughs> Eight. Aww, I love this word. Look at that, another park that seems to be very nice over here. But before we cross the street, let me start by showing you a few interesting buildings in this area here. Starting with these two over here and over here in the colonial days. This church has history. It was the tallest building in the city, all of Sydney. For 50 years. Up until the point you see all these other buildings now. Yes, yeah. including the tower, look at that. Interesting to see the tallest in Sydney at one point, the tallest in Sydney today. As I mentioned in the videos in Melbourne, Australia was a British colony and the British originally only sent their criminals here. This was the basis of the 18th century society in Australia. You know, at that time, Sydney had an architect who was a criminal. Yeah, that was the only one. He was the one who designed both buildings. Were these barracks? designed for criminals. Yeah. So the criminal knew how to build a criminal building. <laughs> a criminal knew how to build a criminal building. Yeah, expertise, right? <laughs> but actually this was not a jail, these were barracks. Two tickets, please. Is it allowed to take pictures inside? Pictures you can, no flash, no filming, no video. Okay. It is so cool. It's like an audio guide. You're given a headset and this device, and as you walk along the museum, you will hear the history. I think I finally got it, you know, the criminal situation here in Australia. The British brought them here. At first they were not in jail. They were allowed to roam around, especially as they had nowhere to escape. And then this place was built, designed by a criminal, built by criminals and for the criminals. It was disgusting, full of rats. To make matters worse, at the beginning the British were only bringing criminals, you know. No farmers, nobody else with other skills. There was hunger, there was famine, all sorts of problems going on. No women. At some point, three quarters of the population of Sydney were convicts. Then they realized something needed to change. So they opened up the immigration facilities for more free settlers, allowed women to come in. That's when things started to change. And here at the museum, you learn the stories of real people as if it were them telling you, and also their real descendants. It creates kind of an emotional connection with you. And it is so interesting how they were able to recover so many utensils used here in those days. This place is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
today, not sure convicts are still welcome to Australia. Look at this question at the customs form. Right next to the barracks, another historical building with an interesting past. Sydney's oldest surviving public building. It was built to become a hospital, but today's the mint. All this was still the hospital. Now you may wonder, why the name Rum Hospital? Rum was the drink at the time, and the governor gave a monopoly to three businessmen here, as long as they'd build a hospital. Part of it is still a hospital. And rumor has it that if you make a donation and rub the nose of the poor, you'll be very fortunate. And just like that, we arrive at Hyde Park, the oldest public park in Australia with the most iconic fountain. Back in the old days, this park was a place for all sorts of sports, like cricket, horse racing. Today, you don't see any of that. Today, is just a place where people come to relax and enjoy. This is St. Mary's Cathedral, the largest church in Australia, but this building has an interesting history. The original building here was burned down. This one is a reconstruction, but it took them a long time to finish, and it was only finished in 2000 for the Sydney Olympics. Wow, the church is so big that over here you have no view to the altar. So they installed these monitors. The first public mass in the colony was celebrated right here in 1803. Wow, it's so interesting how dark the church is. Now, even the donations are by credit card. When you walk all the way to the end of the park, you arrive at one of the most iconic war memorials in Australia. This is the Anzac Memorial. It is a homage to the men and women from Australia and New Zealand, hence Anzac, who served their countries in war, especially World War I, one of the most devastating battles for these troops, Gallipoli. This sculpture represents a dead soldier held by three women, his mother, sister, and his wife. You can barely see it from here. All of these in the ceiling are tiny little stars. There are 120,000 stars here, representing each soldier from New South Wales that served in World War I. Gallipoli was probably the deadliest battle in history for troops from Australia and New Zealand. It happened in a region of today's Turkey, and so many people died. Now, right at the edge of the park, a monument that not many people know what it was when it was built. This is not just an obelisk. This was actually a sewage vent. In the 19th century, sewage was all over, and also the smell. And this was built to take all those smelly gases up there. Look at that, built in 1857. And the location was chosen because there were a lot of pedestrians here at the time, and they needed to do something about the smell. Hyde Park is a beautiful park right in the middle of the city. Out of all those pretty views, the best of all seems to be from up there. The Sky Tower is located in a very fancy mall. Hello. Hello. How can I help you today? Uh, we got tickets here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, good. You're good to go straight through the entrance right. doors. They'll scan the tickets. Okay, inside. thank you. Them, huh? What a building? The Burj Khalifa. This? Toronto. Do you know that one? Oh, this is the Petronas Tower. Yes. And this one? The Empire State Building. And this one here? Tokyo Sky Tower. Yes. You pass. The elevator coming down. Only four floors? Yeah. See? <laughs> wow. Oh, the islands, so many sailboats everywhere. And from here, you can also perfectly see everything that we walked today. We started at the Opera House, went to the Botanic Garden, and then walked all this green <laughs> to here. You just don't have a clear view of the Opera House and the bridge. Look at that, they're hidden behind these buildings. 
very important tip if you want to come here, buy your tickets online at least one day in advance. That's what we did. You get a 20% discount. <laughs> That's a cool one. Oops. Oops. I don't think I've ever seen so many sailboats together. The most famous beaches in Sydney are located over here, and we're gonna show them in a future video. You know, every attraction like this takes your picture, right? They give you a code, you can scan, but the difference here is that you get your pictures for free. I love it. There is pictures, actually. I love that it's free. That is so cool. two very interesting facts about this tower. One, there's a huge water tank up here and that's to stabilize the tower. It holds 162,000 meters. And two, there's an annual race to the top here where people climb 1,300 steps all the way here to the top, raising money for cancer. This is the second tallest freestanding structure in the Southern Hemisphere. Guess where is the first? Melbourne. No, not in Australia. Auckland. It's in New Zealand. That's where we're going after this trip. I hope you come with us. One of the most beautiful cities in the world. Mm -hmm. Just don't tell people from Melbourne. Seriously, there's a huge rivalry here. 